So today I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about my approach to documentary photography and, and the overall documentation process of photography. I've wanted to talk about this for a long time. I've always just found a really handy excuse not to. But today we say, heck it, we're gonna talk about it. There's only one way that I'll know where. I think some people look at documentary photography as this sort of extension of photojournalism, but but I do think the term journalism begins to imply this sort of coverage by commission or driven by some sort of moral or, or political beliefs. And though I think you could probably argue that my morals are on display in some of my images, it certainly is not what drives my image making. And I'm certainly not being commissioned to make any of these images. So with that being said, I think a really great example of this ongoing documentary process uh, is really no better highlighted than the American Writing Paper Company in Holyoke, Massachusetts. <laughs> Since 2017, the first time I drove along the banks of the lower channel in Holyoke and saw those two towers, I was drawn to exploring this location. Though in 2017, only a fraction of the buildings that made up the American Writing Paper Company were still standing, and those that were standing were in the process of being taken down. So I would sneak onto the site, walk around, and avoid the crew working on the demo as much as I possibly could. And at the time, I didn't really know I was documenting the history there. In fact, I didn't know really what I was even doing with my new to me Minolta 7000. Um, but I really wanted to come back and shoot with the Minolta 7000, which is such a sweet camera. Which I still say to this day is one of the coolest SLRs ever made. Lens selection, mm, lacking. But over time, I have refined my approach to shooting this place to be just a little bit more focused. I've really, really enjoyed photographing the same scenes in various stages of decay and dismantleization because the small changes that occur over time, either naturally or even man-made, are absolutely fascinating to me. To zero in on that point, I wanna talk about these images. All these images are of this one specific neck of this trail. This trail is used by the crew, the demo crew, to uh, to take materials to and fro with the use of a backhoe and, and uh, excavators and things like that. But the idea is, is to capture the subtle changes that happen over time. And sometimes they are subtle and sometimes they're not. Sometimes my ideas for compositions there change dramatically depending on what camera and film I'm using or even just by the temperature, by the, the weather changes, by one little detail that's been added that can change up the entire composition. So but I'm always finding it so fascinating to capture this little trail that I literally shoot it every single time I go there. Every time I come back here, I shoot this location and I've shot it quite a bit. Um, that's the last time I shot here was with a buddy of mine, John Waller. And um, please, um, <laughs> what was I saying? Yeah, the last time I was here with my buddy, John Waller, and uh, we shot this and it was probably my favorite image that I've ever taken of this location. The sky was really beautiful, it was nice and blue. 
and the colors, the greens and the oranges and the yellows and everything just was just spot on, almost to the point where I honestly don't think I really want to shoot it right now because that image was just perfect in a sense. So um, no sense in, uh, in, in wasting a frame on something that I think I've done better before. And uh, obviously it's grown in a lot more, but not so much so to the fact that I'd have to shoot it again. I set my focus so I'm super blurry right now but um, that oak barrel was one that I shot on the interior of what's behind it so I think that shot holds some significance at least with me um, pretty cool huh I wish that I had this sort of like here's the secret tip this is this is the one thing that's gonna save you time and money with documentary photography but there's no real simple answer to it it's the best piece of advice I can give you is to just be insanely thorough and, and be persistent uh, and, and stick to your convictions. It, I, I can't tell you how important those three little things are when it comes to, to approaching documentary photography. Shoot as often as you can. Go walk around the areas that you've photographed a million times and try to look at them as if you're there for the first time. I think that will give you a little bit more of a refreshed sense of uh, of. I don't know, creativity, because I know sometimes when I'm shooting around the same areas, I just kind of go right past some of the stuff that I've seen a hundred times to try to find something new. And then I completely disregard some of the, the changing environment that I pass by. And sometimes you can take some of the lessons you've learned from, from past experiences and use them towards new experiences and, and new adventures and, and new explorations. and. Uh, like the other day I was I was driving through, I was leaving Holyoke and going a completely different direction and an, an area that I've been in before and I saw this old car that had recently been dug out and I just started to go around and photograph and it's one of the times that I think that area really never spoke to me before but once I saw some of the, the debris, some of those like surface level, you know, the, the crust so to speak, be wiped away, that's when you start to kind of get into the underbelly, the the sort of the good stuff, right? The good stuff, the stuff that's been hiding there for years. And lo and behold, there's a car, there's bottles, another car, there's a straight jacket, there's big moonshine bottles filled with liquids. I don't know what's in there. I'm not gonna find out. But like, sometimes you just find the coolest stuff and just being able to document it and go back and then document it again. The ever-changing environment, it's always so interesting. That is so cool. But you know what I, I almost didn't even notice was that there's a car hidden underneath all this other brush over here.
know some of you are probably wondering what sort of gear I use. And like I said earlier, it's not about the gear, but for me, I'm always using my Mamiya 645 with the 55 millimeter lens. I always shoot in that landscape orientation, a nice wide angle lens sort of helps capture that entire scene, get as much detail as I possibly can. And for me, shooting around f5.6 to f11, anywhere in between that little range is perfect. You know, when I first started documenting places, I was shooting 35 millimeter with my Olympus OM4 and my Pentax SBO Mini, and I certainly keep those cameras in my bag, but I generally reserve 35 millimeter for experimentation or for when I go to new locations, and I just need a handy tool that I can take out, snap a photo, move on. But like I said, it's all about the tool that gives you the confidence to put you in the right spot, to make the images that you like. And if it's a 35 millimeter camera, great. If it's a 110 camera, cool. If it's a digital, if it's a, a toy camera, like whatever it is, as long as you're having fun, that's really all that matters. If documenting locations or people even is your thing, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that maybe there was something in this video that you could take away. Uh, and if you're not into documentation photography, maybe this will inspire you to get out and do so. I'll see you guys on the next one before my camera turns off again. Bye. Usually the first like four minutes of a video, I'm just like touching the microphone and wondering where the heck is that noise coming from? And then I'm like, oh yeah, shit. That's why I got the headphones on. I can, but I think that was an anomaly. <laughs> that was a big ass honeybee. Levels look good, everything's good to go. Got my notes here, I'm gonna fumble my way through this and not make any sense and then redo it in a couple of days. So let's get after it. I wanna talk you right off the bat, jeez. Jesus. I wanna talk to you guys today about my approach to the documentation style of photography. And um, I completely forgot what I was gonna say after that. I just see the stupid monitor being like, no, nope, too loud. Oh, too loud. Yo, you're being too loud. Miss Elizabeth says you're being just a little loud. Too early for a macho man. <laughs>